Hi, right, back again, and uh, something different this time. For the first time, I'm going to be talking about uh, football. Um, this is, uh, I've only just gotten back into football in the last season. Um, I was into it when I was younger and then just kind of dropped off, but now I've started getting back into it. Uh, probably being around as friends who talk a lot about it has helped as well. So I wanted to do some uh, predictions for how I think the Premier League is going to go this year. And I know predicting the table uh, is a nightmare. Like You never know what's going to happen. Like Who could have predicted Leicester winning a few years ago? Who could have predicted how close it would be? Uh, you know, last year, last season, with you know, one point between City and Liverpool. Um, so yeah, the season starts on Friday, so I thought now would be a good time to get uh, to get this prediction nailed in, so I'm just going to jump straight in. Uh, 20th flat bottom, Brighton. Um, I think that, well, last year, last season, they uh, survived by the skin of their teeth, really, and I think they're going to do worse about Chris Hewton. Um I think he was a great manager. For, uh, I think he was good enough to keep them alive, you know. Um, Graham Potter, he isn't... Uh, he has never been in a top flight before, so... Um, I don't think he's going to be able to hack it. I think I think Brighton are going down this season. I think they were lucky to stay up last season, to be fair. So, yeah, I'm predicting bottom for them. Uh, 19th, Newcastle. Um, Newcastle have had a fucking nightmare of it. Um, Mike Ashley is strangling uh, every ounce of life out of that club. Uh, Rafa Benitez is gone. Uh, and the he was what was keeping them as high up as they have been the last couple of seasons, you know. The fact that they've managed to finish as high with a squad as average as they've got is a testament to how good a manager Benitez is. And they just weren't giving him any money to spend on players. And it's no surprise he's gone. Uh, he's gone off to China now. And they've got fucking Steve Bruce uh, in his uh, place. Um, yeah, Newcastle are definitely going down this season, I think. Um, it's been an absolute disaster for them. And um, hopefully, if if they do get relegated, hopefully they get get something to get their fucking houses in gear you know um 18th Sheffield United uh of all the teams in the league this is the Sheffield are the one I know the least about so it might be a bit misinformed but of the three promoted teams uh Sheffield I think are most likely to go down I think Villa and Norwich probably have decent seasons but um yeah there's nothing really that shouts Premier League to me about Sheffield I don't think I don't see them having a good season of it um yeah I, I just think they're gonna go down like it is, it, this is a pretty not a very well informed opinion like um so yeah i, I, I just don't think see Sheffield doing well uh 17th uh crystal palace um really this all comes down to if they can keep a hold of wilfred saha because obviously there's been talks about him going to arsenal or everton or or united and i think another one that was circling around him um He's without a doubt their best player. He is far too good for them. He should be in a uh, in a top six club. Um, losing Juan Bissaka as well, I think, is really going to damage them. Um, they'll stay up, but uh, it's not going to be good for them. I do think it's going to be rough, and they'll it's going to be by a slim margin, I reckon. Um, but they'll, I think mean, they'll have just enough to keep themselves up. Sixteenth, uh, Southampton. There's just nothing special about Southampton. Like, um, they're constantly selling their best players to the title, particularly Liverpool, you know. Um, and when that... Like, they'll have, they'll have a good season and then they'll sell all their best players and they'll drop down again. It's just an endless cycle, it seems to be, with Southampton. And, um, yeah, I just it's going to be an average season for them. They're going to survive, but they're not going to do anything this season, I think. Like... Yeah, that's basically all I can say about that. Fifteenth, uh, Aston Villa. Um, Villa have actually spent the most money this summer. Um, they spent over one hundred and thirty million pounds on players this summer. Um, a lot of people are thinking they're going to be they're going to pull a Fulham. You know, spending all this money just to get just embarrass themselves and go straight back down. I think they're going to stay up. I think they'll have an all right season. Um, they've got a decent squad. Uh, Jack Grealish in particular, uh, I think is a really good player um, and should do enough to keep them up, I reckon. Um, 
Grealish is a bit of a twat, but he is a good player. There's no denying that. He has been, uh, it was really good for Villa last season, like a big part of them getting promoted. So, yeah, uh, uh, Villa will stay up. Uh, they'll have an all right season, I reckon. Uh, 14th, Burnley. Again, like Southampton, I just don't see them doing anything this season. They'll comfortably survive and just potter around mid table, I think. Mid table was the hardest for me to predict because it's so interchangeable. You know, um, I had my top six and my relegation sorted out first and mid-table. I just kind of filled in from there. Honestly, so many of these places are interchangeable. Really, it's just a case of, yeah, Burnley, I think, are going to have a okay season. They won't do much, you know. Uh, 13th, Norwich. Um, Norwich had a really good season last season when they are coming top of the championship. Uh they are they have the potential to be to pull off a surprise like Wolves did. Um I don't reckon they'll get quite that high. I think um a comfortable mid table finish for them. Um but if they can carry on the momentum from last season, I think that they can uh really establish themselves, you know, for the future as uh you know, a decent Premier League side. Um yeah, it, it, it they're definitely an intriguing side. It'd be interesting to see where they go from here. Uh, 12th Bournemouth, um, it's baffling to me, like, as someone who's getting back into football, that Bournemouth, uh, a established Premier League side now, you know, they've had, what was it, four or five seasons they've had in top flight, uh, top flight now, and they've done well in all of them, um, again, like, I think a comfortable mid-table finish for them, I think Bournemouth, um, one of the best success stories in modern football, to be fair, how they've gone from, uh, you know, surviving in League One all the way up to being uh, comp mid-table Premier League sides. It's pretty astounding. So, yeah, again, I think they'll have a good season. I think they'll comfortable mid-table finish. 11th, Watford. Um, Watford's, again, they got to the, the FA Cup final last year, so they've got some momentum to ride on, even if they did get slapped 7-0 in the final. Um, but getting to, the, get, getting to a Cup final was a big deal, and they'll want to carry that on. Uh they had a decent season last year as well. Uh, again, comfortable mid-table finish, I reckon. Uh, maybe fringe push for Europe, we'll see. But I don't see them qualifying for Europe. Uh, yeah, again, just it's again, it's, it's mid-table seat teams are just like, yeah, they'll do well. That's all I can say about it. Um, tenth, West Ham. Again, like it's just they'll do fine. Um, they've got a good squad. They've made some decent signings. Uh, yeah, comfortable mid table. <laughs> I am repeating myself a lot, but that's just a mid table for you. It's so interchangeable. Like, I do think, again, West Ham will do well, and I think uh, they'll be in the top half of the table, definitely. Um, ninth, Leicester. Again, I can get into more detail. Um, Leicester, uh, again, they've made some good signings this summer. Uh, TL Mans and uh, I've forgotten his name, but it's two really good signings for the club. Um, the top half of the table, I think, is going to be really interesting uh, because I think Leicester are going to do really well. It's just that uh, I think the teams above them are going to do better. I could see Leicester having a good run in one of the cuts, maybe. Um, but I think all of these teams now, from this point on, will be pushing for Europe. Um, the fight for the Europa League spots, in particular, I think is going to be really interesting this season. Uh, so Le I'm putting Leicester at ninth for, uh, for this. Uh, eighth Wolves. Uh, Wolves shocked everybody last season. No one could have predicted uh, how well Wolves would do. That Wolves would be qualifying for Europe in their first season back in the top flight, um, and that's kind of why I put them lower than last year. I did have literally had them higher, but thinking about it, uh, having a Europa League campaign as well as uh, all the stuff with the Premier League and the FA Cup, no offense, it's going to take a lot out of them. I don't think they're going to do as well in the league as they are. They did last season. I do see them doing well in Europe, though. I hope they do. I would like to see Wolves go far in the Europa League. Uh, my mum is a Wolves supporter, so um, I do have a bit of admiration for the club, you know. Um, and especially after last season, like they did so well, and uh, I do want to see them do well this season. I I do really like them as a club. So yeah, again, uh, they'll, they'll be pushing for Europe qualification again, but. I think they're going to be focused on the Europa League. I think they want to impress there more. And I think that's going to take out of their uh, Premier League campaign. So, 
Uh, eighth place, finished for them. Uh, seventh, Man United. Um, this all comes down to one of two things, depending how it goes. If Solskjaer can get the sh his shit together and get the team sorted, or if they if they can get rid of Solskjaer if he does bad enough and get someone decent in to replace him. Um, appointing Solskjaer was a nice morale boost, but he did not uh, really help United to anything. They had one good result against PSG that everyone went mad about, and then they promptly did nothing for the rest of the season, dropped out of Europe, and just ended up in sixth place. So... Uh, again, they've made decent signings. They've got Harry Maguire. Uh, they're going after Dybala as well. Um, Harry Maguire, 85 million on Harry Maguire. That is ludicrous. <laughs> Harry Maguire being the most expensive defender. In He's a decent player, don't get me wrong. He's a good defender, but the most expensive defender ever. <sighs> no. No, not at all. Um... Uh, United were one of the hardest ones to place for me. I honestly don't know what to expect from this season. I don't know whether they're going to get themselves back in gear and really make a push for the top four again because they do have a really good squad. It's just the attitude and the mentality. Or if they're going to have another bad season and maybe even finish, you know, outside of Europe. Like, so... I, really, I, I went with... Um, worst case scenario for me, I think. Um... Honestly, the way things are going, I don't see United doing well. I don't see them qualifying for Europe. Uh, they really need to get themselves in gear. Like they've, Yeah, they've made these signings, but they need to do something with them. The team mentality needs to change. That's what the big problem was here. It was the same with under Mourinho. Like, and Solskjaer, um, as admired as he is at the club, he's not really done anything. Like He got relegated with Cardiff and he did some managing in Norway. He really hasn't proven himself on this top level. Uh, so he needs to really get himself... He needs to up his game if he wants to keep the job at United and wants to do well for them. So, again, this was one of the hardest ones to do for players for me, but the way things are going, I don't see United doing as well as, people, as fans would want them to this season. Sixth, Everton. Now, on the flip side of the coin, I think Everton are going to do really well this season. Um, they've made some stellar signings. And uh, they've really been pulling themselves together more as a team recently, from what I can gather, obviously. Um, and I think this season might be their breakout. Like they can get back, they can get back into Europe. Um, they've again, they've got some exciting new players. They uh, were playing a lot better last season, uh, I think. So yeah, um, yeah, they'll they'll do well this season, I think. Uh, your, your qualification for them, I, I reckon. Uh, fifth, Arsenal. Um, the reason I don't think Arsenal are going to make top four is because they haven't done anything to bolster their defence. Uh, they've made, you know, they've made some good signings in uh, Pepe and uh, apparently they're going after Coutinho as well. And of course, they're still uh, linked with Zaha. So their attack is good. They've got a good attack f uh, front line, but they're still lacking in defence. There was a whole thing about K Koscielny. Um, no showing, you know, like, and he's meant to be their captain. Um, again, Unai Emery needs to sort things out, I think, with Arsenal if he wants to be getting top four. Um, I think they have a good enough squad to get into the top six again. Uh, so yeah, uh, they'll qualify for Europe, but I don't think they're gonna get into the top four the way they are right now. We'll have to see. Um, again, it's a difficult one to place, but just going with my gut think instinct, I think they'll qualify for Europe, but they won't get in top four. Fourth, Chelsea. Now, Chelsea are another interesting one to talk about for two reasons. One is they've got a transfer ban. So the squad they've got now is what they've got unless other people leave. Um, they've also lost Aiden Hazard as well. Like, he was their best player. And that's going to impact them. But I think bringing in Kovacic, uh, Kovacic Pulisic, uh, keeping in Batshuayi and uh, uh, Tammy Abraham... Uh, keeping a hold of Hudson Odoi as well. Um, they've got the talent there. They need to use it. Now's the time for them to actually use this young talent they keep throwing out on loan all the time. And of course, the second thing to talk about is Frank Lampard getting the job with one season at Derby under his belt. And he had a good season at Derby. Got him into the playoffs, uh, got to the playoff final. So he had a good season with Derby, but is he ready for a job as big as Chelsea? Um, I think... 
that he definitely has the potential. It's all a matter of if he grows into the role, if they let him grow into the role. Because he's so green as a manager, they can't expect the world of him straight away. They need to give him time to uh, adjust to the role, to grow into it, you know. Uh, get used to managing such a big club. Obviously, he is very well respected at the club. He's arguably Chelsea's best player of all time. Uh, he's their highest goal scorer ever. Uh, so, hopefully he can keep that goodwill and put it into uh, a good season. Uh, and that's why I've put them in the top four. I think... Lampard could finally be the one to actually pull this team together. Things were a nightmare under Mauricio Sarri. Like, even though they won the Europa League and they did finish third, it wasn't a good season for Chelsea. It was a mess. So, hopefully Lampard can pull them together into a stronger team. Third, Tottenham. Uh, I am a Tottenham supporter. And expectations are really high for them after they got to the Champions League final. Uh... No, we, we don't talk about the game though. <laughs> uh, that was that was a terrible game. Uh, Spurs were in it for all of twenty five seconds, um, but they've also had a really good preseason. Uh, you know they've managed to beat Madrid and uh, Munich in preseason, so things are looking good there. Uh, they've signed on Dombele. Uh They are also linked to Dybala as well, but I don't think that's going to go through. I think um, United are probably going to end up with him. Uh, Trippier's out, he's gone to Atletico Madrid of all places, that's a weird one, but he didn't, he was bad last season for us. Uh, I do think, I do think Spurs are going to have a stronger season in the league this year than they did last. Um, and I do think they'll have another good run, uh, in, in the Cups. Um, I would like Spurs to win one of the Cups, whether it's the League Cup, FA Cup, or... No, they're never going to win the Champions League, uh, but oh, it'll be good. It'll be good they get to the final again. Um, and that's kind of a concern. Like, again, there's a lot of expectations on Spurs now that they've made it to a Champions League final. Um, there's going to be a lot of pressure for them to repeat that or to, you know, to get some silverware. Uh, I think Spurs have a fantastic squad. Uh, Pochettino, I think, is a great manager as well. If they can... Work, work together more as a team. Um, as much as I love Harry Kane and as great a player he is, there's a lot of reliance on him. We were better last season without him when you had, you know, Son linking up with uh, Mora. Uh, they worked better as a cohesive team rather than just uh, siphoning the ball to Kane. Look at the Champions League final. Uh, Kane should not have started that game. Mora should have. Uh, Moore was winding away with momentum. It was thanks to Moore getting a hat trick that we were in the final, and Kane just did nothing in that match. He potted around and didn't do anything. I think we would have had a much better game if Moore was playing. So, hopefully, we can get that sorted. Again, we should be starting Kane. Kane is a fantastic player, there's no doubt about it, but we need to stop over relying on him. We need to let uh, players like Sun and Mora, and uh, Dombele. We need to be letting them shine. Lamala as well has had a uh, a fantastic preseason. Let him, you know, get... Give him more freedom to work together as a team, I guess. Uh, there's loads of talks about Alderweireld leaving. I really hope he doesn't. Um, I think Alderweireld is a fantastic player, and uh, I really don't want to see him leave. Um, I wanted Spurs to sign Zaha. I thought he would have been a great addition to the squad, but it doesn't look it's going to happen now. So, yeah, I do think Spurs are going to have a good season. A uh, really good season, I hope. Uh, and I would love to see him win some silverware this year. Uh, FA Cup? I'd love, to, yeah, I'd love to see. I hope that they could win uh, the FA Cup. But I think that would be a good one for them. I, I, I don't see them um, finishing higher than third. Purely because City and Liverpool, you know. Uh, so yeah, uh, I am I am predicting a good season for Spurs. And then of course, top two are obviously Man City and Liverpool. I don't think anyone is going to come close to uh, those two this season. Uh, I think that's going to that's going to be for a while. Um, since City got the money, you know, it's just been all about them and. Uh, if Liverpool can't stop them, I don't think anyone can right now. But with that said, I am predicting that Liverpool are going to win the league this season. Um, I know they haven't spent that much money, 
uh, this season, this uh, summer. But honestly, Liverpool's squad is fucking amazing. Uh, and of course, City's is as well. But Liverpool, uh, they finished one point behind Spurs last season and they've won the Champions League. Um, they're going to be hungry. They're going to be pressing uh, for this, the league this season. They lost one game last season and that was to City. If they'd have won that game or even drawn that game, you know, they'd have won the league. They were one game off. That's all they, they own. That was it. Um, it's, again, it's baffling to me that a team can lose one game, finish with 90 plus points and come second. Um, that's how mad last season was. Um, again, both, both teams are going to have uh, an amazing season. Uh, both teams are going to win trophies this season, I reckon. Uh, City, uh, today City won the uh, Community Shield against Liverpool. Um, but I think now, I think Liverpool are more hungry than ever for it. And uh, they have the best squad they've had uh, in a long time. Uh, that front line, you know, with uh, Mane... Uh, and Salah and Firmino, you know, up on front line. You've got Van Dijk, who is arguably the best player in the world right now. Uh, so, yeah, I think all the things, are, all the pieces are there for Liverpool to finally win the Premier League. Um, and I, I want Liverpool to win it because I just don't want City to keep winning it. I don't want the Premier League to turn into, you know, the, the French League or the Scottish Premiership, where it's just one team winning it all the time. Um I want someone else to win. Like City are an amazing squad. Like I, there, there's no doubt about it. And Pep Guardiola is arguably the greatest manager of all time. Um, and them winning, you know, the domestic treble last season just shows that. But I just, I, I just think Liverpool are going to do it this season. Um, it's going to be close again. It, like, just, it's going to be incredibly close again. I reckon. Uh, so yeah, that's that's my predictions for this. Um, I do hope that I can get a good chunk of these right. Um, oh, if I mean, obviously, I would love Tottenham to win the league. But it's not going to happen. Like again, nobody is touching City or Liverpool this season. Again, it's going to be between those two. It's going to be incredibly tight. Um, I just think Liverpool are probably hungry for it, and um. I could see City get complacent, like, I don't know, like, it's really tough to call, but I just think Liverpool are going to be more hungry for it, and they're going to, it, it, the timing's right, you know. So yeah, um, if it, leave your predictions as well in uh, comments, or, you know, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, I've kind of had to win this. Um, yeah, I, I, hopefully I'm, I've, I've got a few right. Um, like, share, and subscribe. Appreciate it as always. Uh, I'll leave my Twitter in the description as always. And again, see you next time.